Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Hapara walkthrough, um, specifically for grade seven and eight. But if you're joining us from another grade, there'll be definitely things that you can partake in. So here we go. So I'm just going to present my screen. So I just want to tell you, start by telling you a, briefly a little bit about myself. My name is Tara Potter, and I am a brand new learning technologies consultant, brand new. So bear with me as we, this is my very first live streaming webinar, but um, I'm very excited to share some things about HAPRA with you and yeah, take you through it. So my Twitter handle is at teapot underscore nine. So if you are, a Twitter follower, you can follow me on Twitter. We're gonna start with a land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that we are located on the ancestral, traditional, and unceded indigenous territory of the Algonquin peoples, on whose territory we pray, learn, play, and work. And a short prayer for us to start. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God, I took this position in life as a teacher to make a difference. I love kids and want them to grow into strong, healthy, well-educated people. I ask God that you continue to equip, encourage, and strengthen me in this profession so I can make a great impact in these students' lives. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we're gonna get started with walking through. This is definitely a beginner tutorial. So if you're a HAPRA expert, um, definitely this is going to start right from the beginning. Um, but you never know, there could be a few tidbits in there that you, you may have not have thought of. Um, so if you are a beginner, this is definitely for you and I will go slow and make sure that everyone feels comfortable using HAPRA. So the first thing is, how do we get there? So I'm gonna start by navigating to my staff portal. And you can see here all the different icons that we can choose from, from our, our repertoire of activities. So I'm gonna click on Habra dashboard. And this is going to bring me to my landing page. So you can see here that I have some classes in here um, and this is really what the dashboard landing page, but we want to go navigate to the workspace. So we're going to click up here onto workspace. And I'm just going to take a brief walkthrough of what this is all about. So over here on the left hand side, you can see that things maybe look a little different. Maybe you've been used to HAPRA. Um, you've used it in the past, but you haven't really used it that much in the summer. But there has been some, some new updates for sure. So over here, we have workspaces that are owned by me. So they're either created by you or you've made a copy of something. Uh, this one down here are things that are shared with me. So maybe um, another teacher has shared something with you. This is a new one, my labels. So you can actually label your different workspaces. And then this is brand spanking new, just a Sunday. Um, this is a brand new tab called professional learning. And we'll, we'll go through that one, not too much in depth today, but you can just know that if you were planning something for a group of teachers or a group of educators, this would be a great one to share with those people. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a workspace. So over here on the right, we're gonna click on the plus button and create. And this is also brand new. Um, so we are going to, you get two choices here, one for students, one for professional learning. We are going to make one for students today. So we're gonna press select. So definitely what you're going to do is give your um, workspace a title. So I'm just going to call mine demo grade seven, eight. And um, down here is where you would choose your class. 
I'm going to choose my class. And I'm going to leave these two things blank for now, but definitely if you um, had a description of what your workspace is about, you could put that in. And then you could choose a, a cover picture if you'd like. So there's lots of different ones here. So maybe we wanna click on, we're gonna do English language arts. Oh, this one with the pencil, that looks nice. And what's nice about this, I just want to point out this accessibility setting is that it automatically will sort of generate um, some alt text. So if you did add your own picture, you might want to describe it there for the visually impaired. So I'm going to press save and that saved my picture. And now I'm going to select save draft. So this doesn't automatically generate a workspace for your students yet. It's still in draft mode. So you can still play around with things. And here we are, we have our workspace and we're gonna get right to it. Um, so at the top here, you notice that there are four different columns. And as I sort of roll over top of them, you can see that you see a little pencil. So what we can do is we can click on that pencil and we can change the titles of these different columns. So I'm just gonna call this one student work. I just think that sounds a little bit more friendly than evidence cards. So I'm gonna call that one student work. And this is the one that we're going to focus on today. Um, so you do see that there are four columns, the first column, the second column, and the fourth column are really kind of those view only spaces. So when you do share things with students, they will not be made copies of. So they'll be kind of like view only spaces. So if you were brand new to have a workspace and you wanted to make a very simple but very useful workspace for your students, one thing that you could do is just put a single card in this third evidence column. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to click on create a card and I'm going to give it a title. Um, I actually have a lesson in mind. Um, we read a beautiful book a couple years ago called uh, Refugee by Alan Gratz. So I'm gonna call this Refugee Journal. And I'm going to give it a very, very brief description. Um, click start and follow instructions. Now what we can do is we can choose what we wanna do here. So I know where my lesson is. My lesson is in my Google Drive and that is the example I'm going to share today. You can upload a link or a different file from your computer or you could actually create a brand new blank document in any of those Google Docs. So I know where my lesson is, it's in my Google Drive. And I'm just going to search for it now. And here it is. All right, so I have my title, a very brief description. I have my Google document, which is um, an accessible type of material learning activity for my students. I'm going to leave this part right here, this, the start date and the end date blank for now. Of course, it would be an option for you if you'd like to. Um, but I'm going to say that if you're brand new and your students are brand new, you may want to leave this blank as well, um, just because it allows for a little bit more flexibility on due date. So, um, so the students aren't stressing about if they're not finished or not. You definitely could uh, add a due date on your own. The default is to share this document with all of your students that you selected. So you can see over here, I have selected my class over here is language arts. So that's going to give a copy per student of this refugee journal to all of my students. So this really is like a photocopy to your students. So as soon as they select, um, they press start on this, they, they are start working and it'll be like a photocopy. So you can't um, live update this if the students have already clicked on start. So I'm just going to select done. And here you have an extremely simple but very effective 
um, workspace for your students. So if you did nothing else, and if you're brand new to Hopper Workspace, my suggestion would be to put a single learning activity in a Google Doc format, either a doc or a slide, an accessible type of document for your students. Maybe just a tiny bit of leveling up here. We could add a little bit of color just to jazz it up. And then there you have it. You have a workspace that's that's great for your students. Now, a few things to make this even easier for your students. Over here, the default says students can add cards. So this is a wonderful opportunity for your students to share resources and maybe um, differentiated uh, lessons or, or things that they can add later on. However, if you're very first starting this, it can be a little confusing for students because they may add things by mistake. So I'm going to toggle this off. I like to do that sort of for my beginner groups. Now, so I have this right now and I'm going to click up here on my class. Actually, there's a tiny little arrow. You have to click on that tiny little arrow and I'm going to pick student number eight and this is gonna give a preview as a student. So this is gonna allow me to sort of check things out, see what it looks like on their end. And you can see, this is what they will see when they open up um, their workspace. So you see here that they have a document and um, a start button. So it's a little bit different. Sometimes your students may want to click up here, but they're not going to be able to click there until they press the start button. So now I'm navigating back to my workspace. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit briefly about why I chose a Google document. So I was mentioning that Google Documents are very accessible for your students. So this extension right here, this little purple one with the puzzle piece, um, hopefully most people are familiar with this. It's read and write for Chrome. And these are accessibility uh, tools for your students. And on a Google Document, it you will be allowed to use all of the tools here for your students. And um, you can see up here, they can have text read to them by using the play button. They could record an audio note. They could use voice typing. Um, all of those accessibility settings. If you were to choose something, for example, like a PDF, a lot of these tools may not work for your students and it makes them um, a little bit more difficult to interact with. So my suggestion, um, to try to make things as simple as possible is to definitely try to use Google Documents as much as possible. I'm just going to actually walk you right through. I have the ability here to log in as sort of a pretend student. And I'm going to flip over to my student number eight. So one actually more thing I need to do for that is the last step of your workspace to make it sort of live is to actually press publish. So you can see I sort of forgot that step. You don't want to forget that step, otherwise your students can't see it. So now we have it. All 20 students can see this workspace. So I'm going to navigate over here to my student number eight. So right now I'm in student number eight's account. I'm not in my own account. And I'm going to click up here. And I have, you can see I'm in, so I'll just, I logged into Hopper Workspace and I'm in already. And you can see that there are two workspaces here. So this is the workspace that we created for our students. Um, over here, it says to do. So I, I don't have anything do in my uh, account right yet, but I may have that learning activity shared with me. So find it in Google. And then this is what's gonna happen if your students have 
uh, are logging into Hopper on the first time. So if you have younger students or if they've never done this before, um, you're gonna have to tell them to press allow. So sometimes this pop-up window may, may um, be enough just to make your students panic a little bit, but we wanna make sure that we tell them it's okay um, to press allow. And here we're right into the workspace. So I do want to uh, show you what would happen if I go ahead and press start. And on my computer, um, so it brings you right into the document. What may happen, and uh, we're going to provide a little video for this. I was hoping it would just pop up block on mine, but uh, I've already allowed it up here in your Omni bar, the students may get a little message down here and say pop-up blocked, and then a little tiny uh, red X will appear up here. And what you would do is click on it and tell the students to say always allow, and then they won't have to um, click more than once on their assignment. And that can make uh, Hopper a little bit glitchy at times if they don't do that uh, first step. Once they do it once, it should be good to go. Um, so again, I'm on my document, I'm looking at it and I'm interacting. Maybe I'm going to type in some stuff for my journal. And then when I'm done, I can hit submit. Now, if you're doing this for the very first time and your students are doing for the first time, you may want to tell your students to not worry about pressing submit. So the reason here is as soon as I press submit, send work to teacher. Yep, I'm done my journal. Oh, actually, I realized I didn't proofread. So I go over here. And now I'm in suggested mode. So I can't actually edit my document. So then I have to ask my teacher to resubmit um, the article back to me. So you may want to tell your students, don't worry about putting, pressing submit. Once they get a little bit better at it, definitely you want to um, start introducing things like due dates just to help with the executive functioning and make sure that they understand how to do that. So let's say your students press submit by accident, what would you do? So as the teacher, I'm gonna go back to my workspace. I can see that one person has submitted our journal entry. So what I would do is go up here. And if I click on my student number eight, I can return for edit. Then when I click back onto my account, I should be able to edit my document yet again. So it's not that big of a deal. However, uh, it's something to be made aware of. So that's kind of like your basic workspace um, in a nutshell. And that would, to be honest, lots of times that's what my workspaces look like. They have one assignment somewhere quick that the students can look. And um, it's, it's, a great, it's a great first step. Now, what I'm gonna show you next is we're sort of, we're beyond that now. Maybe we've done this a few times and maybe we want to think about maybe doing a weekly plan or possibly like a unit plan in a workspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this card. And there's a reason why I'm deleting this card because preemptively I'm going to decide that I think I want to have some sections and I want to be able to play around with these sections. So if you leave this top row blank, you can play around with different sections. So I'm actually gonna add a section. I'm gonna call it maybe week one, maybe you wanna call it like September, whatever your start date is. I'm just gonna call mine week one. And then I'm gonna add in some different things here. So remember that our basic one, the third column is the one that makes kind of like those photocopies for your students. But we're gonna level this up a little bit. I'm gonna. I would like my students to actually have my slide deck for our refugee lesson. So I'm going to call this one teacher lessons. We can um, read through. 
very brief descriptions. Um, and then I'm going to find my lesson in my Google Drive. And as I'm doing my finding my lesson, I just want to mention that when you put your lessons in from Google Drive, it automatically um, updates your sharing permissions. So you're not going to get that um, request for edit, things like that. So you definitely want to, uh, if the things are in your drive, to definitely share it that way. So here I have my refugee document. I want to make sure that my group is selected and I'm going to say done. Now I am going to add my other lesson from my Google Drive. There is my journal, journal entry. Actually, that one said student eight. So you want to make those, as soon as you make copies for something, you're going to um, get that in your Google Drive. So I'm actually glad that I did that. So I'm going to X that out. That's not the one I want. I want the one that doesn't have student eight attached to that. So I'm going to click demo again. And this is the one I want. So you let's say you made a mistake and you shared it and a few kids clicked on it and then you realized you had to do something extra to it you want to make sure that um, you have the one that doesn't have the name attached to your student and we're copy per student that looks good and i'm going to say done and then i'm going to let's we're going to have a goal for this week And our goal is to um, write PPC paragraph. And maybe you have a few more descriptors that you're going to put in student-friendly language, and you can develop that uh, definitely with your students. And I'm going to say done. And then my last thing, this fourth column. So it does say rubrics. I like to maybe change this to reflection because this is where I like to put my student reflections or self-assessments. Definitely you could put rubrics in there. Just note that your students won't be able to edit those rubrics because it does not make a copy of them. Um, but what I like to do a lot of times in grade seven and eight is sort of give these uh, self-assessments just to see how things are going with my students. And I like to put in Google Forms. So, oh, sorry about that. And again, I'm gonna find that in my Google Drive. A tip for finding things in your Google Drive is um, definitely call it something you'll re remember. And I like to put stars at the top of my things I wanna find really quickly. So little tidbit for you. All right, so I have my Google form in here. Actually, I'm going to, I'm glad I did that too, because we want to share the sharing link. That's actually a common mistake that teachers make. So I'm going to go to my Google Drive, because what would happen if I shared that, folks? That's right, they would edit my Google form, and we don't want that at all. So I'm going to make sure I have the link I'm uh, that was, you know, I'm just I'm just making making this up. Of course, I remembered that. But I would say that's a common mistake that teachers make. I got rusty summer brain here, friends. OK, so here is my self assessment. I'll just show it to you show off a little bit. So what I did is I said, how did you find the learning activity? Easy, no problem. It was OK. This was difficult. I need help and other. And if you need help, what do you need help with? Now I can use this Google form because it's so general over and over again. So sometimes it's nice to make a self-assessment form that is pretty general because then um, you don't have to make work for yourself. So I'm going to say send, I'm going to get the link and I'm gonna copy that link. And I'm gonna go back to my workspace. I'm on the student view, so yes. There we go, here's the teacher view. And I'm gonna add in the link right there. And then I'm gonna press Control V. Someone told me V stands for Velcro, I kinda like that. Not sure if it's true, but 
let's go with that. So I will ju again just give it a brief disbursement. Fill out a form and press done. Okay, so now I kind of have some stuff right here. And maybe, you know, this was my week one and I'm going to add in week two. And here are my lessons. I'm just going to give them numbers just for now to kind of as placeholders, just to sort of speed things along. You wouldn't just put blank cards. You would put all your amazing lessons that I know you're going to, to do. I just want to show you sort of this function down here. Okay, so now we have two sections and maybe we want to slightly jazz things up here. Um, I like to make all these things, the first, second, and fourth column, the same colors. Now, of course, you can, there's lots of different ways to do this. You don't have to do this. And I like to make the evidence cards a different color. That way, when I'm talking about the work, I can tell students to click on the blue evidence card. I find that's just, um, it's just a little visual reminder for my students. Okay, so let's see what this looks like for student number eight. So you can see that now they have um, the headers at the top here. So I have goals, resources, student work, and some reflections. And they have um, sort of like a nice layout. And then this is my week two. This separation is really great for students to chunk their material. It's really wonderful for students with special needs who may have problems with being overwhelmed with too many things. So I'm going to go back to my workspace. And the other tech consultant gave me a great idea about these sections. And she had mentioned that um, we can sort of play around with where these things are. So if my week two is the newer section, I would probably want to have that at the top for my students because we know as teachers, that your students do not scroll. <laughs> so you want to have that stuff right at the top when you're doing those things, but you still want to have it there in case they were away or they need stuff. So if I sort of hover over top of my week two um, section, I could edit it, but I could also press on this little up arrow and that moves the whole section right to the top. So again, I'm going to take a brief gander at what our students will see and now you can see this new stuff is all the way at the top and then i still have my week one stuff down there but it's a little bit further down at the bottom so we are doing lots today friends we are we have sections, we had sort of that basic walkthrough of just putting that thing right into that third column. Um, we still have some time left. So what I would do now is what I'd like to show you is sort of on the grouping side, um, what to do. So, so far I've only showed how to sort of give everything to all of your students. So. Now what I can do is, so you can see all my students are in here. I have my class roster down here. So I'm gonna make a new group because this group is going to be uh, all my students with uh, an ESL profile, so my English language learners. I am not going to call them my English language learners because my students will be able to see uh, the title of this group. So. I'm just gonna give it a name that I would remember. Um, I'm just gonna call it group two and I know that that's my ESL students. Um, I would give it a different color just to differentiate. And I have my group set up. It says it's empty, but I wanna make sure that student eight 
is one of my students who is English language learners and student nine and maybe the student 19. Now I have two separate groupings and we can go back to the workspace by clicking on the word workspace. And now you can see that there are two groups here. So one thing that you can do to differentiate is when you share your learning activities, maybe you have um, some visual reminders, maybe you have um, a different layout, maybe uh, your ELL learners are modif on a modified plan. So you have a slightly different lesson for them. So I'm gonna call it just the same title. And I'm going to find my lesson. So maybe this is a, a different example, but we'll just click on that just for, here we go. This is one I had from Fozed. And we're going to say copy per student again. Um, but we want to make sure it's just shared with my group too, because those are my ELL learners. And we don't want them to actually have this other one. They are going to do something different. So I'm going to edit that card. And actually, I'm going to, one more step that you would have to do is go back to edit groups make a third group without those three students. So I'm gonna call it group three. And I'm gonna drag just the title. It's gonna populate everyone, but then what I can do is I can go through and I can delete those students just by clicking on um, the little X beside it. So it was eight, nine, and 19. So now I have a new group without those three students. So this would be kind of like for, for everybody. So the lesson definitely would go to everyone. And then these are my two different groupings because I have some English language learners and I'm gonna give them a slightly modified lesson in that third column. So going back here and this top one, I wanted to make sure that I had just for that group three that's the group without those three students. So group eight was in this. So if I toggle over to student view, so my is group two, and then let's see what they can see. So you can see here that I have my, my ELL plan right down here. Okay. Now let's think about some different groupings of what you could do. So we talked about English language learners. Um, you definitely could use this space to just create partners, so for a partner activity, so you could make as many um, stuff. Do you know if there's a maximum number of groups? There are not a maximum number of groups. That is amazing. So you can make all different kinds of combinations here. So sometimes you want to have students in multiple groups, like for example, student number eight is part of the whole class as well as the English language learners, but then maybe you're going to have those students uh, grouped together uh, in different partners. So you could have different partners. You could definitely have uh, students who are following a modified plan, or you could just even have a group of students. Let's say, for example, you know students have a strength in video recording. So they're going to be sort of your preferred format grouping. So you could have a grouping right here. This is maybe your video group. And then maybe you have students who are 
your audio group. And then these are ones that prefer to type or use speech dictation, your written group. So it's nice to have some different options there. Um, and then once you sort of get to know your students, especially after you've read your IEPs and you get to learn their strengths, you could take those students and drag them in there. And this could be for everyone. This does not need to be just for your students uh, who have special needs or who are on a, an IEP. It could be for your whole class because students definitely um, have a preferred format of how they'd like to answer that. So sometimes in language arts, we can definitely give some choice in there. Good. Okay. So what do we got here? We have some time left. Should we do something fun, Steph? <laughs> should we show? <laughs> yes, yes, we should. <laughs> I think we should maybe show a header. Would that be sure, fun? Sure, that would be so fun. I think okay. people would really enjoy that. But again, this is only for the people who are yeah. feeling like they're ready for this stuff. Oh, oh, yes. So maybe we want to. So let's look at all my groups. So we talked a little bit about color. So what you could do instead of making things sort of all the same color for your week is you could make them all different colors, which is kind of nice. And then you can refer to things um, specifically for that color. So you could say, click on the purple card or the the teal card or the, the gray card or the brown card. Um, this is actually one thing that I think it was Miss Catherine Week who showed me this trick a, a little while ago. And this is an interesting group this is going to be a blank group, but a ghost group. So you can ch choose whatever you decide. I like to just call it a blank group. And I am not going to put any students in that group. And there's a specific reason why I wouldn't put any students in that. So let's say we have our, I'm gonna move this down again and I have week one up at the top now. So as a teacher, I like to plan and maybe I like to have two weeks go in at the same time. I wanna have my lessons ready, I wanna have them geared up. But this, we might not want students down here quite yet. Maybe they don't have the, the, the scaffolded skills to move on to week two without having some lessons in there. So we want to have this but we don't wanna share it with them. So what we could do is we could click on edit and then having, instead of having that one group, we could scroll all the way down to blank group and make these all shared with the blank group. And there's a really cool reason for that. So if you are a planner, and you like to plan ahead, but you don't want to overwhelm your students, this is kind of like a, a neat trick to do. Blank. And blank. Very good, okay, so we have week two, so I can see this as the teacher. However, if I click on my student number eight, we should, this should work, and we see, oh, look, I, they're still, they still see these two things, so I have to go back and fix those two, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, let's check. Oh yes, it says two groups. See, it's good to toggle to the eyeball, then you can see if you make a mistake. See, I did that on purpose, just so we could try this out. So I accidentally had these, this one was already clicked, so you wanna make sure that that is off and that only blank is selected. And I could have known that because it says two groups, but I didn't notice. Edit. And 
you want to toggle this off. Very good. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to student view and student number eight. And there, we just have week one. So this is helping our students develop those executive functioning skills, especially in grades seven and eight. These uh, skills are still developing. And in fact, they're developing all the way till a person reaches the age of 25. I feel like still uh, we're continuously evolving with our executive functioning skills. So we don't want to overwhelm our students by having seven weeks of lessons ready to go. And that would be a lot for a student to do. So, however, if you're a teacher who likes to plan and to be organized and have things ready, on your end, you can see it. However, on the student's end, all they're seeing is this nice sort of compact, um, chunked uh, lesson format with your goal, with your teacher lessons, um, with, your, with your evidence card that's actually modified just for your ELL student. And then you have your self-assessment right in here. Yeah, you want to end and then get right. Yeah, so I think that's a good place to stop. I feel like if we went further, it really wouldn't be much of a beginner workshop. Again, so your LT consultants are here for you. I am just one, but we also have the amazing St Steph Pearson and we also have Kate, Catherine Wake. And, oh, actually, I know what I want to show, the Discover tab. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, brand new, hot off the presses, friends. We are going to go to, actually, I need to go back into Workspace. There's something cool. So a lot of people now are in the, um, position where you're going to be teaching some brand new subjects or maybe you're teaching a brand new grade for the very first time um, there is a new really amazing thing and it is this discover tab so we are just on the main home page here and I'm gonna click on that and you can see here that you can click on all these different subjects we can click on all these different grades and we can also filter through by the Ontario standards. So that's what I'm gonna show, just maybe click on the Ontario curriculum. So that would already weed out that um, things that have been labeled purposefully that have the Ontario curriculum. And maybe we want to, we're teaching science for the very first time. And oh, simple machines, that's exactly what we're, we're doing here. Um, and you can also filter through by grade as well. So maybe we want to do grade seven. Not too much with that one. So maybe take that grade off. I liked that simple machines one. Okay, here we go. Sources of energy. So I'll just click on any of them for now. Um, little caveat, these are not vetted. Um, however, so you still have to sort of click around a little bit, but with sort of narrowing it down, um, by subject and by grade and by uh, standard and maybe a keyword you can uh, look through. So let's just take a gander at this one. We're going to open the workspace. Okay, so some cool, looks like a cool stuff. So maybe, oh yes, and you click around and this looks great and I maybe would like to explore these links a little bit further. So what you would do is copy And this is making an entire copy for you in your workspaces. So once this is copied, you'll be able to find it in my workspaces. So this is a, a, a new feature and um, there's stuff being added all the time. So teachers are constantly uh, making their workspaces accessible. And here we go, view copy. And now this workspace, I can edit my groups and I can add my students in here. Um, 
And then when I'm ready for my students to look on it, I would press publish. So I'm gonna just publish, there we go. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop for now. So that was the Discover tab. And again, if you have any questions about HAPRA, you can definitely ask any of the consultants. Um, and you can just fire us an email and we'll for sure be able to help you. And we're going to be running courses and more webinars throughout the year.